The last complication that we can get on uh, variable or equations of this type is ending up with variables on both sides. Let's suppose that we have a problem that looks like this. 3x plus 7 is equal to 8x minus 2. Let's suppose that I want to solve for x. Well, when I look at this problem, it's really hard to get x alone when there's more than one x. So if you have an equation where there are more than one of the same variable, your first job has to be to get them together. Right now, these are on different sides of the equation. So in order for us to get them together, we're going to have to move one of them to the other side. To move a variable expression across an equal sign, we are going to have to add or subtract the expression. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, in this case, I have a 3x and an 8x. I need to get them to the same side. I either need to move the 3x over to the right, or I need to move the 8x over to the left. It actually does not matter which one you do. Uh, the final answer, your intermediate steps may look different, but the final answer will be the same. Um, we can, right now this is a positive 3x, so we can subtract 3x to move it to the right, or if you decide to um, move this this way to get rid of the 8x, we could subtract 8x to move it to the left. I usually choose to do subtraction in a way that keeps my answers positive. I tend to make uh, fewer silly mistakes in my algebra when I do that. So in this case, I would rather move the 3x over to the side with the 8x because that'll keep it positive. So a positive 3x, so I'm going to subtract 3x from each side. Here, 3x minus 3x is gone, and I'm left with a 7 behind. On the other side of the equation, I have 8x minus 3x, which is 5x. And I still had that minus 2 that I haven't done anything with yet. But what I've managed to do here is I've managed to move the x expression over. Now, once they're on the same side, I can actually combine them. So 8x minus 3x gave me that 5x. And then I have an equation just like the ones we've been dealing with before. And we're going to just solve the rest. Now we can get the x alone because there's only one of them. Uh, right now, 5 is being multiplied by x and we're subtracting 2. Always get rid of the weakest link lowest on the order of operations pole. Um, so we got to get rid of the minus 2 first. To get rid of a subtract 2, we're going to add 2 to each side. 7 plus 2 is 9. Equal sign stays there. And again, it's really nice to keep things lined up like this so the equal sign doesn't go anywhere. Uh, the plus 2 and the minus 2 are gone, leaving me just with 5x behind. To finish getting the x by itself, right now it's being multiplied by 5, so I'm going to divide by 5 on each side. Times 5 divided by 5 undoes each other and uh, leaves my x alone. And here on this side I have 9 fifths. Uh, 5 does not go, nine, yeah, 5 doesn't go into 9 evenly, so we can just leave our answer as a fraction. Uh, there's nothing that will simplify 9 fifths, so just leaving your solution like that is totally great. Okay, so that's really the main process that we're going to follow as we go through. Let's do a couple of other examples here. Let's suppose that we have negative 2x minus 7 equals 4 minus 6x. Okay, in this case, I have more than 1x. When you try to get the x by itself, you see that there's more than one of them. So our very first step is going to have to be to get those onto the same side of the equation. All right, so we have two choices. We can move the negative 2x over here or the minus 6x over here. Totally up to you which one you want to do. Um, to move the minus 2x, I could add 2x to both sides. To move the minus 6x, I can add 6x to both sides. And I'm going to do that this time. Negative 2x plus 6x. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4, so that leaves me with 4x when I put those together. I still have the minus 7. There's my equal sign. I still have the 4. The negative 6x plus 6x goes away, and I'm left with 4x minus 7 equals 4. To finish getting the x alone, 
I have to get rid of anything added or subtracted first. So I add seven to both sides. That delays or that undoes itself and leaves me just with the four X equals 11. And then I can finish solving this problem by dividing each side of my equation by four. Fours undo the, each other and leave me just with the X. And on the other side of the equation, I have 11 fourths doesn't divide in evenly. It's as simplified as it can get. So we're finished. All right, so this is our basic process. Once we have this down, we can solve some crazy, uh, crazy looking equations. Let's do something fun here. Let's suppose that we have three X minus six times X plus seven equals five X 5 times x minus 2 plus 7. All right, so this is a big equation. I've got lots of x's going on in this problem. I've got parentheses as well, and we can do everything in this equation using the stuff that we know so far. As we're going through, the first thing that you always want to do is get rid of parentheses. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to get 3x. This minus 6 can get distributed through, so we're using that distributive property to get rid of the parentheses. Minus 6 times x gives me a minus 6x. Minus 6 times 7 gives me a negative 42. Bring down the equal sign. On the other side of the equation, I have more parentheses, so I can distribute those out as well. 5 times x gives me 5x. 5 times minus 2 gives me a minus 10. This plus 7 is still plus 7. It was outside of the parentheses, so it's not part of that whole distributive property thing. Okay, now at this point, notice there's a lot of different terms here, and there are terms that we can combine together. I highly recommend that you simplify each side of the equation any time that you can. I couldn't put anything together up here because some of the x's were in parentheses and others weren't. That caused us some big problems. But right now, notice here, I have 3x minus 6x. Well, I can do that. 3 minus 6 gives me a negative 3. So here I have negative 3x. Then I still have that minus 42. So I was able to combine those together now I have just an x term and just a numbers term. When I look at my equal sign on this si side, again, I have too many things, but I should be able to combine it down, so I have just an x term and just a numbers term. Uh, my x, the only thing I had was that 5x, so we'll just bring that down. Think of this as a negative 10 plus 7, and that gives me a negative 3 on the right side of my equation. So I've gone from super crazy looking to now almost normal looking, and this is what our equations and problems looked like here um, in, this, in this most recent video. So now the next thing that we want to do, if we want to get the x by itself, now that we're as simplified as we can be, we need to get the x's on the same side. I can add 3x over this way, or I can minus 5x over this way. It doesn't matter. We just need to move one of these to the other side of the equation. I'm going to add 3x because it keeps everything positive. And when I do that, negative 3x plus 3x goes away. This is a negative 42. Remember, you keep the sign of whatever is in front of those numbers. On the other side of the equation here, I'll move this over a little bit. Uh, 5x plus 3x gives me 8x, and then I still had this minus 3. That's still part of my problem. Now I want to finish getting the x alone. I'm finally down to where I can undo my order of operations at this time. If I want to get the x alone, I have to get rid of the 8 and the minus 3 because they're on the same side of the equation as the x. Get rid of things added or subtracted first. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the minus 3 by plusing 3 on each side. Negative 42 plus 3 gives me a negative 39. 
if some of these numbers get big, feel free to uh, double check those with your calculator. Um, <clears throat> minus 3 plus 3 goes away. And I'm left with 8x. Still want to finish getting the 8 alone. Divide by 8 on each side will be our last step. And in this case, I have x is equal to negative 39 over 8. I managed to get fractions for all of these. Some of them will go in nicely, but none of these examples here did. But as I get to the end here, I'm left with negative 39 divided by 8 gives me a negative solution. Uh, the fraction 39 over 8, uh, there's nothing that will go into both of them. 39 is 3 times 13, and 8 is 4 times 2. They don't have any things in common. So that would be my most simplified expression. So don't get intimidated. My big story here, don't get intimidated. Even if these equations start looking big, you've got all the tools that you need. Just follow through these steps. Get rid of your parentheses first. Simplify each side of the equation until you just have a letter a letter and a number and nothing more than that. Um, at the most, a letter and a number on each side. Then once you've done that, if there's letters on both sides, get them on the same side and then go through and do that process to finish getting the x alone.